Hey ladies and gentlemen, this is Luminous coming you guys with a pro to the commentary. Today I'll be casting Sigma International versus Alliance. And this is match from MLG Columbus group stage, day number one. Unfortunately, this match wasn't on the main stage or the main stream. So I think a lot of people have missed this match as a result. I want to do this match a little bit justice because this definitely was the best match of day one. I haven't seen it, I haven't cast it, so this one should be very, very fresh. And I don't think a lot of other people have seen it as well, so this one should be fairly exciting. Uh, Sigma International playing on the Reagan side, Alliance playing on Dire. Alliance, you guys already know who they are. Really good Dota players. Meanwhile, Sigma International, I want to give them a little bit of introduction because I don't think um, people are, are, are as familiar with them. So going Ten down the list, Fata, go. who used to be not the drafter, that used to be effing mad, but Five seems seconds. like they're drafting in this tournament and you know, it ended up quite well. Uh, Fata is one of the best Reserve solo mid players time. in the world. He used to not even be within the contention of top 10, but he now definitely is uh, one of the best solo mid player in the world, one of the best puck in the world, which next to S4, next to Dendi, next to Mushi, for example, I rank him definitely top three, if not top two best puck player in the world. His puck is just absolutely beastly. Effing Mad, uh, kind of the mastermind, the cerebral brain uh, of this particular team. Really, really smart Dota player. If you guys want to look up his blog, I think it's Effing Mad, dot block spot or something like that uh where he talks you know I'll, well gives you competitive insight um, about a lot of things uh, particularly his article his two-part article on support i really learned a lot about support play from that article what the mindset of a support player should be the, the race Reserve against time. time i really recommend that if you're a support player or if you just you know want that to get better bad. overall in the game uh go look up those uh, blocks and then and read a little bit about it Paris or Sock, the carry player of the team, been to I think every TI so far, I believe, uh, and you know, very very stable carry player. Nothing more to be said. Miguel, uh, has been here since the dawn of time. Played since Dota one days. Really Five love his seconds. solo mid profit. Uh, well, I love solo mid profit all the time. I think uh, uh, Manga Q, Radiant's I think was pick. was the Vietnamese players that also did uh, solo mid profit. No, that was Soso. -so. Yeah, Soso -so that played uh, solo mid profit. Well, Migo does it too, and Migo did it quite well back in the day. Now he's the offlane player for Sigma International, and uh, <clears throat> a player that really stood the test of time. And finally, Poss, who next to the big names here on his teammates, really doesn't get to shine as much. Um, but I think he's really definitely one of the most skilled player, uh, most skilled go. support player in Europe. And that's saying a lot because Europe have a ton of skilled support players. What really um, makes me want to be like Poss in terms of the support Dive player is that. Pick. His team fight capability is absolutely insane. He knows exactly where he needs to stand as slow, squishy supports. That's a very, very vital tool that you need to learn. And, and Pass does it just as well as the best of them. So uh, look towards him to make big plays. I imagine on his visage today. And last but not least, uh, well, Alliance, you know, S4, Loda, Ake, EGM, Admiral Bulldog. And Unfortunately, I didn't have too much time to talk about the particular drafting style of these two teams. You guys should be fairly familiar with alliances, but I'll talk a little bit about Sigma Internationals. They really remind me of the way that Orange likes to draft, at least down to the three kind of your semi-carries. They like to draft very, very self-sufficient heroes like Morana, Windrunner, Puck, Gyrocopter, Weaver, things of that sort, in such that if the supports decide to roam around, and let me tell you, I think that likes to roam around quite a bit, um, the support or the, the semi carries by themselves should be okay. Like you should get out of trouble. You shouldn't really die, etc., etc. Now, unlike Orange from TI3, Orange when the supports roam around, they like to roam around with things like Venge Sand King or Sand King Lashrak or something like that to get a lot of kills. The way that Sigma Ten roams around, they don't actually look to go get kills. They look to actually bolster those lanes and prevent kills Five from happening. Seconds. So it's a very, very interesting way of playing support. It's a very interesting way of moving your heroes around. I'll talk about that more as the game progresses. Let's quickly introduce who is playing what. Fata is going to be playing your puck. You can fast forward through this pause. All we have right, Pass we playing the uh, Visage. We have Effing Matt playing the Abadoon. <clears throat> we have Migo playing the Marana. And last but not least, we have a lot of more pauses. Effing Matt playing the Gyrocopter. So, um, Sigma International really like to play heroes like Abaddon, Tree and Protector, Bane Elemental, and let me make a kind of a, a detour, talk a little bit about Bane. Bane is one of those support heroes out there that 
I really don't know why he isn't pick often. In fact, I asked the exact same question to Effing Mad uh, at during Columbus. I had a great time chatting with Migo and Effing Mad uh, as we were watching Speed Gaming versus DK in the finals. But I was asking Effing Mad, why don't we see more Bane? You know, he's a support hero that, that really is really good. And Effing Mad says, I don't know. <laughs> like he thinks the support hero is amazing. I think the support hero is amazing, but it seems like most other team does not think so. And if you think about Bane as one of those heroes that gives you a good early game setup spell, like for your Marana arrows or whatever else, late game disable, fiends who are going through BKP, mid game damage output, a lot of you know good stuff. Unfortunately, a lot of weaknesses as well, like you know lack of counter push, lack of AOE, um, and that's perhaps why we don't see too much of him. Ammo Bulldog playing on the Lone Druid, look at him actually going very far off by himself and warding. Um, warding at Observe War Deep. So you might be asking yourself, why isn't he actually sending the bear ahead of him to scout out enemy heroes, instead of why is he just like kind of YOLOing it, going to the enemy jungle and putting down ward? Well, if you actually send the bear forward, the enemy knows that you're scouting. And the enemy more, more likely uh, scout maybe, hey, did he actually put down Observe Ward? And uh, basically D ward this particular ward. You notice that after he put down the ward, he's gonna put it back on the courier, give it back to his support. So now he has one ward over here, and he, the, there's no way the enemy team should know that he has warded on that particular spot. And with this particular ward, you have also seen that this ward has been dropped down. So very, very small things like that allowed him to get a little bit of an edge. And like, let me tell you, small things in Dota actually add up quite a bit. Ooh, double damage here. That's gonna be nice for a stock. Alright, let's quickly introduce the rest of Alliance. S4 is going to be playing your solo mid Magnus, no surprises there, going for the quick bottle. Ake is going to be actually giving him a little bit of in lane support as Lich. And uh, dual lane top is going to be EGM playing the Rubik, and last but not least, Loda playing the Night Stalker. So I think Fata should do okay here. He's got three sets of Tango, or three Tangles pulled to him. And that, uh, well, also, Volvo needs to take away this particular bug where you can't see items. I don't know why. Obviously, I don't know what GG Branch needs to do, so I need a tooltip here. Uh, Volvo Priest. Priest, bring it back. Um, yeah, Lich should actually provide quite a bit of experience denial to Fata. Uh, and I imagine that S4 should actually get a quite a similar amount of levels compared to Fata. Uh, Fata will try his best to deny and last it, but with the pug you know, nuking him every other second, uh, denying creeps every other second it's gonna be very very annoying uh, one one thing going for fata is that he's gonna be very resilient to ganks in fact he's actually doing a very good job and this is why i, I believe that fata is one of the best player in the world was able to do great last hit look at that fata using phase shift to dodge a melee attack harassing ake forcing him to use a, a south just really knows that the hero inside and out Ammo Bulldog, very nicely done. Look at him using the bear here, preventing the tunnel three from happening, and uses the bear to pull the creep going the other direction. Uh, the lane that we haven't looked at it too much is this lane up top here, Pass. Doing a little bit of denial pull here to the left, trying his best to deny basically the creep wave, but all Loda as well as EGM has to do is come nearby and grab the experience. Uh, also, a little bit boon here if they could they could basically farm this creep wave as well so farming the creep wave as well as the uh fable getting lasted there very nicely done uh, you can see that the pass is uh, trying to get some experience from the low ground this is something you see quite a bit low ground high ground uh farming pulling uh etc etc but this particular lane combination is going to give Marana very easy farm. I don't think the Night Stalker uh, Rubik dual lane actually beats this lane. And that's going to give Migo basically a free farm up to phase boot. And once you get phase boot on Marana, you get a lot more ability to kill. And speaking of uh, ability to kill, Effing Man rotating around like I talked about previously, but he's not looking for kills. He is just making sure that nobody is really dying. He sees that Puck perhaps needing a little bit of help on the mid lane and is going to go back. Uh, go to the mid lane and give him a shield or two, etc, etc. But it looks like he's not going to be able to force too much of anything. And that's because he's a bad. <laughs> Unfortunately, a bad. And you're, you're not going to kill Ammo Bulldog, for example. Um, I guess you could get your, your Frost Sword, but no, he's not going to skip any of his spells. So he's going to look to, you know, pull a little bit, get a little bit more experience, and then maybe roam a bit to the mid lane. He definitely needs to roam top once in four minutes hits. And that's where really Night Stalker becomes much, much more powerful. A lot of people talked about that during the changes of 6.79 as Fata gonna dodge out of uh, harm's way. A lot of people talked about how Night Stalker got nerfed because the first night time uh, in a solo mid Night Stalker is 
four minutes in, and you're not going to be able to get your level six. Such that darkness you cannot extend your nighttime uh, during the first nightfall. And a lot of people kind of said, "Oh, that's a big weakness of uh, Night Stalker." I really disagree. The way the new way of playing Night Stalker, I believe, is to actually play on the safe lane, like the way that Alliance is doing, and that really allows you to hit your level four. Uh, or sorry, yeah, hit level four during the first nightfall. And because you have supports slowing enemy heroes down, because you have supports nuking for you, you can actually get a lot of easy kills. Just void, nuke uh, from your other support, stun from your other support, and then a couple more hits, and then another void, then you definitely get a kill. So I imagine we're going to see a rotation here from Effie Matt. And in fact, Effie Matt checking the top rune and then just going into lane in preparation of any aggressive dive here from the Night nice Stalker. Meanwhile, it looks like Ake is going to find himself a double damage rune on the bot river and that's a, that's one of the really good thing about having a dueling mid is the ability to check you know runes and, and whatnot and really deny it to a, a very rune dependent hero like puck so puck forced the bottle crow but obviously the career is going to be flying a little bit slower as a result how are we doing in terms of farm let's quickly check that sock doing quite well even against the lone druid by admiral bulldog doing quite well there 24 cs leading the entire game meanwhile uh s4 on the mid lane though definitely not faltering behind, 24 CS for himself as well. Meanwhile, your off laners, uh, we have uh, 20 or 17 on Mirana. Amor Bulldog only getting 11, so that's actually a very well done by, look, look at Sock just zoning him out. Call down being used, he's gonna try to kill the bear. Not gonna be able to do so. Not too much loss in the sense that Call down does have a fairly short cooldown and the mana isn't particularly too important uh, for him early on, so it's no big deal there. Meal looks like Fata is having a little bit of uh, trouble farming. Although it looks like he's gonna get a last on the ward, that's gonna help out a little bit. Uh, probably Effing Mad dropped the Sentry Ward down a little bit earlier. So nicely done here. Uh, so Good far, uh, if you want to talk about who's actually power. getting the advantage position in the sense that you know both teams are not doing anything, we're five and a half minutes in, no kills happening just yet. I imagine it's gonna be a lines because they definitely play for the mid game, right? S4 just wants the bling dagger. Um, Admiral Bulldog just wants time to farm. Nice Stalker just want to hit, you know, 12 minute where the second nightfall is going to happen, where he starts to play a lot more aggressive. Um, so I, I think that favors Alliance a little bit more. The Radiant team, if you look at their lineup with Puck, Marana, as well as Gyrocopter, sure, they could go late, but I think they're definitely looking to play a little bit more of an early game push. This is what Sigma really likes to do. They want to like to end the game in about 20 minutes to 25 minutes. Ignore my ringtone, uh, all along with you in the background, I apologize. I'll take that phone call a little bit later on. Uh, but yeah, they want to end the game early, and so far they haven't killed any heroes yet. They haven't done any aggression on any particular tower, so I think Clock is going to be their biggest enemy. Not the hero, but Clock, or, or clock the Time. Uh, they, they have to do something quite aggressive quite early, get a couple of tower kills, and just snowball completely out of control. So far they haven't been able to do that. Notice that uh, effing mad, it's going to make the rotation to the mid lane, sensing that S4 is about to hit level 6, so Fata perhaps in a little bit dangerous. So he's going to chill here in a bit, perhaps just judge maybe S4. If he's out of mana, effing, uh, effing mad could rotate away, but if S4 has RP available, which by the way he does, uh, I think uh, effing mad is going to stay in a nearby position and make sure that everybody's going to be okay. Looks like we're going to see a dive up top here. Loda dropping quite low arrow and Starfall has already been used. Soul some shit. I'm not going to go on Loda. I think Loda juking himself behind the trees uh, to dodge away from that particular gank. So very nicely done here by Loda. But with that move, it seems like Miggle and, and his uh, teammate has assumed control on this particular lane. Uh, actually, also it looks like uh, Magnus being forced to skewer away. One thing I do want to talk about is that Fata does have a second point into Waning Rift. Something that you want to consider getting if you're laning against a Magnus. Obviously, if you're going to try to gank Magnus, Magnus will skew away like we just seen so. But uh, if you get a second point into Waning Rift, it gives you a 0.75 second of extra stunning, or not stunning, silencing. Which against a Magnus, if you get a 0.75 extra second of right clicking but between yourself and any other support ganking, then uh, you, you get, actually get the ability to, to do a lot more. It looks like we're going to see a gank attempt coming on the bot lane. It's going to be Night Stalker changing into nighttime against... Oh, what a root! Of course Admiral Bulldog will get a root right there. There's a first blood going towards Night Stalker. So what was a 8 minute of uh, peacetime suddenly turned into aggression. So that means Sigma have to get something else or whether it's a tier 1 tower push up top, whether it's a gank on the mid lane. But so far, looks like they can't gank get too much of anything. Miko's gonna wrap around. He knows Lich is behind the tower, but not a very exactly safe dive. So 
Well, the they're gonna get a little bit of tier one tower damage, tower. but unfortunately, Effie Matt is the person that gets picked off. Really nice rotation, something that you don't really expect because it was actually daytime. I, yeah, it was daytime. A nice soccer turned it to nighttime. Uh, just you know, after getting the root, you, you get some kills. Emma Bulldog. Uh, let's see how he's farming. He's got a little bit of Tranko boots on him, and not not a Midas rush just yet. Although he definitely could go Midas. What a what an awkward. Uh, exchange of standing there doing nothing. One hit root, no one hit root. There's a second hit root. A little bit of right click, he resummons spear. I'll talk about that in just a bit as call down is gonna get dropped here by Admiral Bulldog. Admiral Bulldog went for the gusto play there. So if you entangle from your bear, entangle has a two second cooldown. You can't, or actually, five second cooldown. Wow, it was much longer than I thought. So, he had a 5 second cooldown on Tango, so basically what he did was he resummoned a new bear. And when you resummon a new bear, the game thinks, well, it's a new unit, it's a new bear. So it the, the, the cooldown of Entangling Claws gets refreshed. So in, in theory, you could actually get chain stuns on the Entangle if you resummon your bear, and that's exactly what he was going for. In fact, if he got a chain stun of, of the bear, he probably have, would have gotten a kill. Effing mad, it's gonna get seen over here. He does not have Tango here. It's gonna get trapped. Of course, first hit in Tango. Immediate Fodic Shield to deep up himself, and the shield's gonna get broken here. Effing mad dropping low, and Sox is gonna come right back in. The bear dropping quite low. Keep in mind that he does not have a resummon because he just used it. Ammo Bulldog, man, what a player. That's why he's the best bear player in the world, because he gets entangled like that. Top lane, Poss playing aggressive here, going on Ake. Where's the Mirana? Mirana actually checking for runes here. Arrow's already fired up, and S4 is going to be okay. Coil's going to get broken. The silence already be used. Unfortunately, a little bit off the mark. S4 still dropping low, though. Bottling through, got the magic stick as well. RP not going to be used. Oh, <laughs> F being mad. Or sorry, Miggle almost got RP uh, by S4. I, don't, I think he would have died regardless, though. Uh, very nicely executed gank there. Fata even missed the waning rift, which by the way he leveled up, so that was a very, very big miss. Uh, but I'd say it did not matter at all, so very nicely done here by uh, by Fata. Top lane here, Pass looking trying to get that level 6. And uh, he's got to be somewhat careful though. There is a lane ward that is going to see Pass over here. If they get one slow on him, he's definitely dead. Uh, but looks like he's gonna be okay. All he wants is level six, and once you get level six, you're pretty much set on Visage on that point. But looks like we're gonna see a little bit of tier one tower push coming up. Uh, spell being stolen, that is gonna be a grave chill, all right? And this is, it wasn't so assumption. DJ, I'm doing a very good job hitting level six, uh, even before Paz does. Looks like we're gonna have a little bit of support rotation coming up from effing Matt as well. Keep in mind, again, Sigma, the biggest enemy is their clock. Uh, they, they have to get some type of early game aggression. Killing S4 mid was nice to lane that bling dagger. By the way, he's halfway there. But they got to do a little bit more. You cannot get kind of individual kills. You have to transition those individual kills into tower pushes. This ward is going to see effing mad from, or sock from coming in. So they should not be surprised whatsoever. And this is time here for Admiral Bulldog on the opposite of the map to do a little bit of tier 1 sieging. This is what Alliance likes to do quite a bit. Play with four, I and mean, as we see a little bit of aggression coming out. Oh, what a silence coming out from Fata, preventing that RP from happening. And again, Migo and Fata, two ganking duels here, gonna get yet another kill. Very nicely done. Shutting down S4 even further, so he was halfway to the Blink Dagger, now even further away. Moonlight Shadow being used, and I'm not sure whether this would actually seen it. Maybe not. They're looking to actually open up with a call down. Both supports hiding very safe behind that tower. I think trying to die for a nice stalker is not going to be the, the good way to do it. And it looks like this ward is going to see them once again. So we are going to see a little bit of rotation coming in. This ward have done so much work here for Alliance. The rotation here from Mirana is going to get seen now. This particular ward is going to allow him to not get dove upon as well. Fata being forced to rotate the bot lane to protect that tier 1 tower. And there you go. Uh, about Basically a 13 minute, 12 and 30 Hanamidas coming out from that lone druid. Not exactly the quickest one ever, but he's, he had to go for Tranko Boots to keep his uh, mobility high. Fata, so he's actually going to go for the uh, bear kill. No, no, he's not. Sigma International, 12 minutes in. Leading by one kill. Really need to do a little bit more. 500 goalie, nothing to write home about. Experience actually in lines. And I think that's really coming down to the supports. If you want to check on the support levels, 
Uh, yeah, Effie Mats, very, very slow to this level 6. Same thing here on the Visage, because right, they've been rotating down, a lot, a mostly Effie Mat, whereas Lich is basically staying in lane. EGM's been pulling nonstop, so they've been doing a very good job in terms of uh, getting the levels. I really, I'm really, i really worried for Sigma International. They're doing well right now, but they need to get more towers. Uh, I think it's going to come through from Fata, because the only way you're really going to get tower against Alliance is after you get two or three hero kills. And after having a Blink Dagger on Puck, uh, that's exactly where you want to be. Puck already level 10. This is where he really hits his peak, where you have access to basically every one of your spells. Uh, all of them max out. The long arrow is going to come in. Looks like uh, just a little bit shy of the uh, orb range. Uh, obviously, level 11 is going to increase your coil a little bit more. Fata getting every last hit. Look at how S4 is trying to bait out that phase shift. Fata having none of it. Not going to get baited out. There's a Blink Dagger, 14 minute rune, it's going to be up on top. Alright, Illusion Rune. So, once the Blink's going to happen, what what are we going to see here from Fata? Are we going to see more farming? I, I don't think they are. They have any more time to passively farm. They need to react, they need to be aggressive. Perhaps killing S4 one more time is where they want to start off. Uh, but looks like Marana has already rotated up top. Effing Matt, I think he was sensing something. He's like, why can't we get any ganks off? We even use the Moonlight Shadow and trying to protect... Uh, practically find this ward they even find the ward but I think the ward timed out uh, finally all right so we're gonna see the first uh play of aggression from sigma on the top lane moonlight shadow being used they want to go in undetected and here we go killing nice soccer under tower if you have five it's definitely a good way to go about it here comes a two-man silence two-man coil they can focus on each and big call that's gonna come to two-man kill an immediate tower push they should go for tier two as well this is exactly how effing mad have written it up immediately. We're gonna see a little bit of aggression go on the bot lane, but Pass is already here. Pass with the bird, perhaps. No, the birds are not here just yet. Migo teleporting back in, so I really love it. They haven't missed a single beat. Oh, arrows that's gonna hit on Ammo Bulldog. I'm not really sure what they get to kill. Starstorm's gonna come through. There's a Soul Assumption as well as a Grave Chill. Ammo Bulldog taking a ton more damage. We're gonna see another Soul Assumption, but that's why that's why the bear is such an OP hero. He's so tanky. Eight two soul assumption. That Granted, one of those tower. wasn't a, uh, a full souls one, but still, uh, eight two soul assumptions, a star storm, an arrow to the face, and gets to walk around with twenty five uh, percent HP left. It's gonna go back to the druid form, uh, basically having a smaller HP pool, allowing you to get a little bit more HP regen. Uh, from his uh, triangle boots. Very nicely done. Again, that's exactly what uh, Sigma needed to do, and that's uh, how they pulled it off. They needed to do more of that Dream Coil, 20 second cooldown uh, to go. So if they could set up the exact same play on the mid lane and do that, that would be pretty good. Cooldown's gonna be back up very soon as well. In fact, it's already back on cooldown. So I like the fact that this team, as we see uh, a pickoff, uh, successfully done on effing man unfortunately not level six just yet so no get out of jail free car for him yeah they, they they need to uh not mess around with things like midas's uh you know basically greedy items go for what you need the quick bkb on gyrocopter the quick bling dagger on puck and just go to work so where's fata fata thinking about jumping they have perfect vision thanks to this particular observer ward it's setting up shop and here we go the entire five of sigma Five grouping up. They, yeah, they're looking for S4. Ooh, what a blinking out from S4. But by blinking out, I think they have forfeited that particular tower. These They are doing so much damage to this tier 1 tower. The creeper is going to get bursted down as well thanks to the flat cannon. And the question is, will Sigma and do a tier 1, tier 2 push? And I think they won't actually do so. The creep wave has already pushed the tier 1 bot. They could push the tier 1 bot tower from Alliance a little bit easier. And that's the thing that's impressive about uh, Sigma International. They're pushing tower, but they're not giving away anything. And not giving away anything against the Lone Druid is very, very key. One of the, the big, one of the key thing about Spirit Bear and Lone Druid that not many casters talk about is the ability to snowball. The, when you think about snowball heroes, you think about Green Pain, you think about Storm Surge, things like that. But a Lone Druid definitely could snowball in his own right, in the sense that you get a couple of tower kills by yourself, yes, and suddenly your Midas turns into a Radiance very, very quickly. And once you get a Radiance about 25 minutes in, the game is almost guaranteed to be yours. Again, Sigma International pushing a tier 1 bot, defending the tier 1 mid. In fact, looks like Fata looking to be aggressive Radiance using that coil. Tier 1 tower bot is gonna get denied. So that's actually a very, very good deny coming out from Alliance. Again, right now, uh, Radiance is Radiant 
is uh, relying on all these tower kills to stay competitive. Their heroes are not that good walking into the mid game. I guess, I guess Pog as well as Gyrocopter is pretty good mid game heroes, uh, but they want to knock down six outer towers and, and take the game to be completely out of reach from Alliance. And you can see it from Miguel's uh, item build. He's going for a drums into a Yasha. Really, the, the I guess the most cost-effective early game item build in terms of a do stuff build. It's not your Midas. It's not your you know Mantis. I guess Mantis out first. It's not too bad. Uh, but yeah, drums into Yasha is definitely the most aggressive Marana build that you could elect to to choose from. And, uh, again, where is the next line of aggression coming from Sigma? Are they going to do a smoke gank? Is the question. They also really need to get level six on Fafi Man. Finally, just have it skilled as a uh, borrow time. That's that's one concern I have about Abaddon. He is really a hero that doesn't do much if you unless you get at least level eight, a uh, nine, excuse me, where you have two of these spells maxed out. Double smoke gets purchased. Yeah, Epic Mass senses that they need to do more. Getting three tier one towers down is great, especially protecting the three tier one towers. If you look at the go graph, about three thousand goldie, but they're not getting more beyond this. They're not farming better than the enemy hero. They're not a uh, you know much more ahead in terms of experience. In fact, they're down by 3,000 experience as well. So they need to do more. Uh, they need to snowball and they're not slowing ball right now. Uh, using a couple orbs. Gonna go to the right side. Loda. I'm gonna get the silence and Fata being forced back to get a little bit more mana. I think the tier 2 is the next line of aggression, especially now with BKB being finished. Ammo Bulldog though, leading the entire game in terms of net worth. Uh, he has got the Radiance. He's got to 3,900 gold. I think they have about two more minutes. Yeah, Sigma in has about two more minutes of aggressive play. If they could kill the bear a couple more times here, it'll be great. But if they don't really get a sizable lead in the next two minutes, the game's gonna get much, much harder. Immediate D war coming Dyer's out here from Aki. Uh, paying complete down. attention to what Effing Man was doing. So Effing Man can't really do anything about it. Long arrow, not gonna hit on anything. But that's gonna give them a tier two, I believe, Dyer's as you see Gyrocopter you getting position. We got Bulldog on the mid lane, not getting bit picked off. Already got the. Uh, a sacred relic picked up so yeah once radiance is out really they have maybe maybe in theory you could drop a call down yeah, coil and right click him down just tower. complete focus fire but i don't imagine that's uh ammo bulldog will get into positions like that and keep in mind that team fight for alliance is just absolutely exceptional if you clump out on bulldog you're gonna eat an rp you're gonna eat a chain frost and that's not exactly where you want to be also alliance is getting very tanky already all three of their core and night stalker the Lone Druid as well as uh, Magnus are very, very tanky as well. So it's it's hard to actually get kills on these uh, Alliance heroes. And, uh, the fact that they've been able to get kills is actually testament to how well they're ganking. But here we go. They're going to try to get a kill on Migo. Migo, Moonlight Shadow being immediately used. Tier 1 tower under quite a bit of siege. But in fact, it's going to be a Tier 2 siege on the mid lane. Tier 2. Are we going to have any backstab attempt? Yes, is it? in fact, we are. S4 thinking about jumping in. Where's the RP? They're going to... Oh, what RP? That's going to be on three or four. Here comes the chain frost as well. The shockwave is going to come through. No shockwave just yet. BKK gets popped out here, but looks like Sox dropping quite low quite quickly. And the bear gets entangled. He's already dead. Looks like the Vistra is going to be dead on the right side here. Effing Matt trying to survive through that. He's going to get bursted as well as well. Huge RP being used. Unfortunately, Fata wasn't there in time. He was defending his tier one tower. And what a backstab coming out. I think, yeah, they had a ward down. Unfortunately, that did not see the path of uh, S4. And that's why they call S4 Son of Magnus, because he drops RPs like that. It was really great coordination. If you saw what happened there, it was S4 walking in there and an immediate teleport to the tower. And normally the, the reaction you have as a player is that when they teleport onto the tower, you say, all right, they're, they're thinking about fighting us. Let's back off. And then uh, as they're backing off, they ran straight into the jaws of S4. And that was the most amazing RP I've ever seen. But now that the RP is down, Sigma really needs to get a push to go. They don't have to be any uh, afraid of anything for the next, uh, you know, 100 seconds or so. They need to take advantage of this and do more. Because that one team fight is the only team fight they could give away and not much beyond this. Uh, also, unfortunately, Effing Mad uses 10 second BKB and die there. So they, they can't be too happy about that either. But, or not effing mad, sock. I keep calling these guys effing mad because effing mad is such a cool name. But yeah, uh, they, they need to play more aggressive. Uh, I, I'm not I'm not saying that they're they're playing uh, incorrectly or anything like that. What I'm trying to say is trying to tell you how how tight this game actually is. This game looks you know fairly normal. Oh, you know, five to five, 25 minutes in. But I feel that Sigma is very behind. 
uh, because of the nature of the lineup. Now, there is another way to play this if Sigma is not Sigma. If Sigma is like Alliance or something, they'll just play for the late game. Get your Gyrocopter extremely, extremely farm. Go for your BKB, Butterfly, MKB. So in that sense, there is still, you know, a plan B. But the way that Sigma has been playing uh, throughout the entire MLG tournament, I don't think that's how they usually like to play. Here we go, we're gonna see... Like this. No, no Quill to initiate. Moonlight Shadow... shadow. Ooh, the... Oh, they, they know exactly where they are, but... Oh, what a... How did they even see EGM? EGM gets picked up, but the RP is gonna use... It's gonna be onto two hero. Imida DBF coming out from Fata. Fata popping his haste and trying to run. The Radiant Spirit zapping everybody away, but Lona uses BKB. Meanwhile, looks like Effing Man in the front line. Looks like he's still okay. Trying to heal him up as Effing Man still alive, but Entangle coming out from the bear. This bear entangles absolutely OP. Looks like they got one for one trip. Fata going for more, using his haste and Admiral Bulldog resummon spear. Can they actually kill Admiral Bulldog? They definitely need to do so. Ammo. Oh, so damn tanky, his bear, Radiance burning, what a shockwave onto you, and the Radiance, it's gonna kill at least Haas, the orb's gonna come through, Where, where's the face, face, blink dagger, he could be able to blink away, blink, oh no, the bear's gonna be there, the face, but the Radiance burn, dead, Somebody's man, Admiral Bulldog getting yet another kill over there, uh, meanwhile, I think Visage survived, I think the fact that, um, Fata blinks south instead of the left side is probably what killed him. If he blinked to the left side, maybe he could run away uh, in such a case that he could have another cooldown on his blink dagger. But what a play from Admiral Bulldog. Bear dies, immediately summons another bear. He was also microing his hero quite a bit, uh, quite well, not uh, box dragging his hero and, and allowing him both his hero to eat the AoE. But and that RP wasn't as spectacular um, as the previous one, it wasn't as big, clear of a victory. Uh, as a team fight in the mid lane, but it was good enough for Alliance. And I think this is where the Alliance comeback really begins. The tier 2 tower is still very healthy in terms of HP, and we could see that these team fights are definitely not going in the in the favor, in the direction of Sigma International. They are getting a little Radiant bit stronger as the game progresses, but I feel like Alliance as a team, as a whole, is getting much, much stronger. Vanguard and BKB, Loda was previously tanking practically the entire team, and he was not dying at all. Loda, though. Going to enemy jungle, it's gonna see Effing Man, Effing Man popping the BKB immediately, but what is that BKB is gonna do? In fact, basically all they did is ran towards uh, the enemy hero, got the BKB off, and that's all she wrote. EGM even steals an Aphotic Shield, so this team just got much, much tankier. Are they gonna initiate off? That's the question. They don't have BKB, but they decide to fight regardless. Loda popping his own BKB, he's gonna go, oh no, where's the first Entango? No Entango, oh there's Entango! They're gonna try to go on Sock Sock. Very, very low. Admiral Bulldog on the back line. He's going to be okay. Meanwhile, it looks like Effing Matt's going to get silenced up. RP's going to hit onto two. What an RP from S4 and S4. Well, S4 is going to go down. Effing Matt's going to go down as well. Pass is going to be in huge trouble as well. And uh, yeah, looks, looks like Loda's going to avoid him up. He's going to be dead. The bear, meanwhile, on the back line. There's an Entangle hit on Migo. Jesus, have Admiral Bulldog not Entangle? Anytime in this, in this entire game. And Lions gets a five-man team wipe. Again, off the back of... Beautiful RPs coming out of uh, S4, and that's gonna be a tier 1 tower, and that marks the big comeback of the gold graph at the very least, I believe. Uh, still down by 3,000 gold, but it's gonna go plummet quite a bit. In fact, it's not only gonna be a tier 1 tower, it's gonna be a tier 2 tower as well. Dota is a game of timing, and when you miss your timing like that, it's, it's, it's tough. And, and again, I'm not trying to criticize on Sigma. In fact, I think they try very hard to hit their timing. Noted by the tier 2 push up here. Noted by the aggression on the bot. But it was basically answered every time by Alliance. And Alliance is now hitting their timing where Radiance is up, BKB and Vanguard is up on your Night Stalker. And uh, obviously your uh, Ammo Bulldog is going to be... Or not Ammo Bulldog. S4 is going to be finishing his BKB as well. They're hitting their timing, and I feel like the Alliance timing is much, much deadlier. Um, so I think Sigma has to go for that game plan B now, where your Marana is going to be looking to be your secondary carry. Uh, pick up a Butterfly, MKB, BKB, whatever the case is, get some big items, and get some big right click in. Same thing with Sock here. Uh, probably needs to start out with the Helm of Dominator to get some little bit more armor, and then go back into a uh, Butterfly, MKB. Kind of your stock standard uh, agility carry item, so... We might be in for the long haul here as, you know, we definitely seen games being won by a big rapier on Gyrocopter, so it's definitely quite doable. 
Yeah, so if you guys, I hope you guys are actually enjoying all these MLG Columbus replays, especially the group stage ones, because again, I don't think a lot of people have saw these ones. I do actually plan to cast uh, Speed Gaming versus Team Liquid um, as my next replay cast, because I've heard that one to be a very, very good game as well. So, looking to uh, bring you guys more and more replay action. Also, if you guys uh, know if there's really good matches from the other tournaments, like D2L or Dyer, Sineca, Sineca uh, definitely leave a comment in the comment section below as well. I'm definitely looking to bring you guys more replay cast. It's a uh, holiday timing. There's dogs barking outside and sirens. And there's noises in my room, but yes, uh, I'll be uh, bringing you guys more and more replay cast uh, as time progresses on. And Basher gets picked up here on Loda, so... That's a very interesting item purchase. It definitely goes through the BKB. It applies an instant stun against uh, Aphotic Shield as well. Keep in mind that Aphotic Shield could debuff Sun, so that's going to be a one interesting way depending on how Effing Mad will use the spell. I imagine that Effing Mad will just lob it out instantly to get the cooldown down because these yeah, team fights seem to be going for a fairly down. long time that you just want to use your spells in uh, right in the early game, especially a six second cooldown. Yeah, you want to use. Uh, quite early as we see. Ooh, Mego. It's like uh, using the Moonlight Shadow for himself. I'm surprised that there's no gem up on um, the Dire Hero just yet. Actually having a pair of uh, do something about Sentry. That and that's tower. it. No dust either. So, yeah, somewhat surprising. But yeah, if you look at the go graph here, it, it went straight down after the team fight. And Sigma, I guess they're playing for the plan, plan B now. They're going to go for the late game victory uh, through Gyrocopter. You know... I'm not even the biggest uh, hater of getting a minus right now on Gyrocopter. Actually, that seems pretty bad. The one, okay. So you might, you guys might thinking, why, why do you want to get such a late minus, right? 30 minutes minus. Actually, it's pretty bad. Um, I see this game if Sigma just turtles up very nicely. I see this game going beyond the one hour mark. In such case, minus will more than enough pay for itself. The only really downside of that particular style of game plan is that, first of all, uh, the other component of getting the Hannah Midas, which the experience gain, is not going to be as important because Gyrocopter is already level 15. Also, Midas eats up one of your inventory slots, which, by the way, all of the items are really, really good at this stage of the game. And, and lastly, I think this is the most important point, is that once a line sees the fact that you have Midas on Gyrocopter, that's 1,900 gold being spent on a non kind of, I mean, it does give you 30% attack speed. That's you know, that's true and all, but that's 1900 gold being spent not on something like a Helmet Dominator, not edging you towards the butterfly. And that's gonna give the green light to Alliance says, you know what, they're down 1900 gold, literally they're like, basically they just threw away 1900 gold, let's team fight now. And I think that's that's the reason why we won't see uh, such a late game Midas in, in most of the time against a high level team like Alliance. Here comes a little bit of Roshan attempt here on Fata. My ice is on you. I don't think he's going to be able to do a little bit of a uh, sniping tactic. Nope. Looks like Emerald Bulldog's going to pick up the Aegis. This is going to be tough. No, Loda is going to pick up the Aegis. All right. So I think we're going to have Scythe of Ice being picked up on Puck. Yep. Got it. Uh, meanwhile, Butterfly being uh, gotten towards two on Gyrocopter. Uh, one... One argument against a uh, particular dis item build coming up from Gyrocopter is if I'm going for the Butterfly, I would probably start with the Ring of, uh, or Talisman of Evasion because I feels like every team fight, both uh, the Bear as well as Night Stalker is going right up on him to right click him. And he is so important to the team that you just want to have as much survivability as possible, especially thanks to, you know, Aphotic Shield, Mist Coil, things of that nature. So. I'm not sure whether the extra 30 damage or the attack speed will really help out. Uh, but in any case, he's gone for the more expensive Radiant component. That's fine. Doing so good. Meanwhile, Migo's farming away as well. I wonder what he's going to be getting. Very nice item pick up here by Admiral Bulldog going for the Vlads. Vlads is uh, somewhat of a forgotten item, I feel like, in a lot of uh, kind of pro game scenarios. Oh man, this bear is just so damn tanky already. Plus 20 armor. He can even put the Vlads on him if he wants to do so. Obviously, I think he's going to put it on the actual hero. And uh, get his team a lot more tankier as a result. Where's Miggle, all Miggle's gold? I feel like he's been farming for quite a bit, but I'm not sure if he's got an item on the courier. It doesn't seem like it. So that's a, another BKB coming out here uh, on, on Magnus. So Magnus... Double BKB on the lines, and Magnus a target you can't ignore. Nice soccer you definitely cannot ignore because of the 
uh, of the, uh, the, 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 the dagger, ba basher, <laughs> basher. And then you definitely can't ignore the long drew bear. And you definitely can't ignore the support because one of them packed chain frost. The other one can steal your coil or the and everything else. And you're going to try to gank the bear. What a great gank. If you kill the bear, there you go. That's good stuff. So if you kill the bear right now, I think you guarantee yourself a tier 2 tower. I don't think Alliance will fight this team fight without a bear because that will give Fata and the rest of his team the ability to actually just take away the bear during the middle team fight and render Admiral Bulldog useless. Instead, they're not going to go for it. I'm surprised. Normally, Sigma, very good at aggressive, but it looks like they're going to try to defend a tier 1 tower of their own. I'm not sure whether I like that play as much. Uh, but they looks like they are doing a good job in terms of whittling down this tier 1 tower. Radiant's top towers take a tier two tower, but they're gonna just get a trade. I, I think right now Sigma should try to avoid fight as much as possible. Arrow, that's gonna scout S4, but yeah, I really think that they should try to avoid a fight as much as possible. If RP is down, for example, if if uh, yeah, maybe they're down eight BKBs, then Radiant's you take the fight. Towers, but I think trading a tier two tower for a tier one tower is definitely an okay trade. I'm surprised they didn't go for it. The birds are perhaps towers, thinking about going for it, but now they're going to get a tier 2 for a tier 1 and a tier 2. It's not even a trade anymore, a favorable trade at all. So, yeah, I think Sigma perhaps had a lapse of uh, miscalculation or whatever else, but it did not end up going well for them. And they now have to go back and set up here to defend the rats, because the rats could fall right here. The game could end right here if they lose this particular team fight. The bear is cooling down as well. Lotus going to silence on Admiral Bulldog. Here comes a call down being used. They got to use a BKB on Sock. Sock's going to get mech back up. It looks like, ooh, we'll see RP. RP not being dropped just yet. That's four. Coil's going to be, oh, BKB being used. Here's the RP. That's going to be onto two. They're going to go right on Sock. Sock popping his BKB. Finally pops, dropping low. Oh, no. Fata's going to get blown on the swap. Fata facing himself up. And Shockwave. Shockwave. Oh, my God. What a Shockwave coming out. And that's going to be the first set of racks. In fact, you see Ammo Bulldog thinking about going mid. They could just rotate mid right now. No. Actually, mid tower is still alive right now. Thanks to the fact that there is tier two up. So what will Alliance do? Alliance, are they going for the throne? Yes, in fact, they are going to go for the throne. What a sense of uh, momentum coming out from Alliance. S4's RP completely on point this game. And I think they're going to win the game right here because it's going to be 38 seconds till Puck comes back. And they really need the damage output. Kalgan completely missing out there. S4 looking for the... Wow. Alliance really going to just win the game right here, right now. What a beautiful start here. They're going to try to defend the... Throw. Ooh, arrow not gonna hit. There's a Maelstrom online somewhere. I think, is that the bear? No, I think that's Murana's Maelstrom. Yeah, in fact, yeah, that was Murana's Maelstrom. Looks like they have defended their throne, but damn. Look at the ghost wing. Jesus Christ. That's a that's a huge, huge ghost wing in favor of Alliance. Alliance trying to close out the game. I really like that. Uh, they could have gone back. No, there wasn't even Roshan. I was gonna say they could have gone back and got the Roshan, but they basically got two extra towers here, which, you know, in hindsight, that's what close to 2500 gold for the entire team so hey that's not too bad they didn't lose too much of anybody in fact they didn't lose anybody at all they didn't so no tower diving no ultra aggression it looks like here comes s4 and uh, they gotta go oh what a blink he just blinked away from it oh but they're gonna focus him down regardless yes huge play here focusing on s4 that's one kill but immediate buyback fata dropping low no face on him right now gets lifted on sock sock gotta survive in this particular team fight he's the only saving grace for the team they're gonna focus on Lola, but keep in mind that there's a buyback on s4 and s4 is coming back skewer where's the rp there's the rp on to do effing Matt using his ultimate immediately sock getting healed back up still surviving sock still surviving but not for long and that's gonna be it gg gets called huge plays from s4 i really like the play from the end from uh sigma international they know they're very far down they know that they have to win multiple team fights in the world so they moonlight shadow they smoked them and they went for it they kill S4, but unfortunately, thanks to the 2 tier 4 tower that the uh, Alliance destroyed earlier, S4 had the buyback, and that's all she wrote. So, I felt like this game was one of the most high skill game I've seen in quite a bit. So, very well played on both sides, but Alliance just played a little bit better, and they took away the victory. So, well played, and uh, that's one win for Alliance. So, hope you guys enjoyed this particular replay. Also, again, I'm going to be casting Speed Gaming versus Team Liquid. I heard that replay was exceptionally sensational as well. And again, let me know if you guys want me to cast more replays from other tournaments like Sign Cup or uh, D2L. For those of you guys that, you know, Fiend replays or Fiend live matches, let me know. Let me cast a good game for the rest of us. So, yep, hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next time, this is Luminous signing off. See you guys.